So uh, I'm going to solve problem 47 from homework 9G right here. Uh, uh, and so basically it says that we have an elastic collision. So that basically tells me ah, kinetic energy is conserved uh, of a 400 kilogram bumper car collides directly uh, from behind with a second identical bumper car. So they tell me it's identical. That means both cars are going to be 400 kilograms. So in other words, mass one equals mass two, which I'm just going to call M, and that's equal to 400 kilograms. So I got the uh, uh, masses M here. Um, and, then, and then they say the initial speed of the leading bumper car is 5.6 meters per second, uh, and that of the trailing car is 6 meters per second. It's worded kind of weirdly, but basically what that means is this trailing car, right, because it's behind this car, is, uh, is at a speed of six meters per second. So I have V1 is at six meters per second. Uh, uh, and then V2 is going to be at 5.6 meters per second because that's the leading car. And eventually this one's going to catch up and bump into that one. So next up then we got, and we're trying to find out what are the final speeds here. So here's what's, you know, here's, here's uh, something that comes up when they use an elastic collision. Because uh, it's, it's not going to be like most of our momentum equations where it's one equation and you're done. I'm going to have to use energy and momentum. That's going to be kind of the idea because I need to find both of these speeds. So I drew my diagram here. Here's my initial moment. This is what happens before. And then here's what's happening after. Uh, uh, right here. So there, there we go. Uh, uh, so yeah, before they're, they're about to hit and then they collide, I'm going to say they bounce off and do this. I don't know for sure if that's going to be the case, but I'll find out uh, in my, my calculations. I'm pretty sure, though, that's what's going to happen because, uh, yeah, well, anyway. All right. So uh, uh, first thing I'm going to do is say, well, momentum can be conserved. So that means uh, uh, M1V1 plus M2V2 equals M1V1 prime plus M2V2 prime. Um, and I think I'm also going to use, uh, uh, I'm going to plug in numbers here as well because this might get a little bit messy. Uh, well, one thing for sure is that all these masses are the same, right? All, all of these masses are the same. So uh, they can all just cancel out. So that basically means that you got V1 plus V2 is going to equal V1 prime plus V2 prime. You know what? I'm going to try it without numbers really quickly. See, see, see what the heck happens because all those are going to cancel out. And now I got this, uh, uh, this equation right here. I'm going to call it equation one. That's relationship one. So I know V1 and V2, and I'm trying to look for these two. So let's see what that looks like with kinetic energy now. So I know my initial kinetic energy is going to equal my final kinetic energy because it's an elastic collision. So that tells me this. And so to write that, then it's going to be 1 half m1 v1 squared plus 1 half m2 v2 squared equals 1 half m1 v1 prime squared plus 1 half m2 2v2 prime squared. Okay, so uh, 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 that's the uh, uh, kinetic energy being conserved. And again, all the masses are identical. They're all 400 kilograms. So all of these masses cancel out as well. Cancel, 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 cancel. Uh, oh, and all the one halves cancel out. So now I got uh, this relationship, v1 squared plus V2 squared equals V1 prime squared plus V2 prime squared. Uh, and there's that relationship. So basically now I got two equations and two unknowns. And I should be able to solve now. Um, I think what I'm going to do, let's, let's use this one. Let's use equation one. Let's plug in numbers here now. Uh, the velocity is V1 is 6, V2 is 5.6. So we got 6 plus 5.6 equals V1 prime plus V2 prime. Uh, I'm going to isolate one of these. I don't think it really matters. 
and uh, uh, and then and then solve. So six plus five point six, that's eleven point six, and then I'll do uh, I'll solve for v two. So minus v one prime equals v two prime, and I'm going to take this relationship and plug it in here. So this is now using equation two. Uh, I got v1 prime is 6 squared plus v2 prime is 5.6 squared equals uh, uh, v1 prime squared plus, and then now instead of v2, I'm going to have 11.6 minus v1 prime squared. So this is going to be uh, 36 plus 5.6 squared. What does that get reduced to? 36 plus 5.6 squared. Uh, that gives me 67.4 equals uh, V1 prime, uh, whatever, fine, squared. Uh, Plus, and then I'm going to have to factor all this out because fun, right? Um, so this is, a, this is one of those FOIL things, right? 11.6 minus V1 prime uh, times 11.6 minus V1 prime. And this is why you don't see much in it. Like, like on, well, yeah, on the AP exam, they might say, like, go here. And then once you got that, you're done. Or once you got your two equations and two unknowns, you're kind of done. Because the rest of this is just algebra now. Uh, so let's see, 11.6 times 11.6. That's going to be, so this is 67.4 equals V1 prime squared plus uh, 11.6 squared. That's 134.6 uh, minus 11.6 V1. So it's going to be 23.2. Because again, I'm doing, you know, multiply these, then you multiply these, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, uh, so it's 23.2 uh, V1 prime plus, uh, let's see, V1 prime, negative V1 prime times negative V1 prime is going to be V1 prime squared. So I think there's all that. I think I got that. Okay. So let's see, combining some of these, this is going to be, uh, so 67.4 equals 2v1 prime squared, because that's combining this and this term, uh, plus 130, or let's do minus 23.2v1 prime plus 134.6. As you can see, I got a quadratic. Uh, so I'm going to uh, make everything zero, so I'm going to subtract both sides by 67.4. Um, and then this cancels with this. Uh, and then this is going to be 0 equals 2v1 prime squared minus 23.2 uh, v1 prime plus Uh, one thirty-four point six, sixty-seven point two. All right, uh, and then so now I can do quadratic equation, or what I'm gonna do is just plug this into Wolfram Alpha. All right, uh, so uh, I, I plugged in this equation, the equation that I got previously into Wolfram Alpha, got my zeros, and my zeros end up being in interesting numbers. They're 5.6 or 6. Uh, uh, both of those are the things. So I'm going to make the argument that V1 prime then, uh, this should be V2 prime, should be 5.6 then meters per second because it was previously 6. Uh, and then that's going to mean then this one is going to be 6 meters per second. So I'm, I'm kind of skipping a, a, a little bit here, but let me show you my reasoning behind this. So V1 prime has to be, so first off, the, the Wolfram Alpha uh, uh, thing is, I mean, th this is correct. Like I'm, I'm not arguing that, not, not, that nothing is, this is correct. However, uh, I'm saying V1 prime has to be 5.6 because previously it was 6. 
Um, and so it's going to bump into V2 and it's going to slow down as a result. So it, it's not going to remain at 6 meters per second. It's going to change to 5.6 meters per second. So it's going to slow down. But then it's going to give some of its kinetic energy or some of its momentum to V2. And that's going to now move away at a speed of 6 meters per second. So that's, that's kind of what's going to happen. It, it, uh, I, I changed this. The, uh, I originally thought it was going to bounce back this way. I forgot, though, about this kind of we're going to we're going to be able to make a rule kind of out of this of, of what happens when the masses are all identical. OK, so uh, uh, kind of going back into these equations, let's see if this checks out. So here was my original equation. V1 was equal to 6. V2 was equal to 5.6. Does that equal? So that's going to be 11.6. Is that the same as V1 being equal to 5.6 and V2 equal to 6? Well, that's also 11.6. So that checks out. Uh, let's see if it works also for this kinetic energy equation. So again, V1 was uh, 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 V1 was 6 squared plus 11. Point, or sorry, 5.6 squared equals, and now V1 is now 5.6 squared plus 6 squared. Well, these are identical. They're, they're just flipped, right? And uh, uh, so, so this would also check out. This equation would check out. So the, the big idea here is that when your masses are equal, so only if it's elastic, it's got to be an elastic collision. If the masses are equal and it's an elastic collision, the speeds end up just flipping. Right, because you you can see right the speeds end up flipping as a result. Um, you you probably saw this too in my demonstration when I had one car that was moving right that had a mass m and then another car was at rest, right? Because what ends up happening is this mass ends up then being at rest and then this mass ends up starting to move if the masses are equal. If they're not equal, then all bets are off and you can't make that assumption. That's what's gonna happen. You gotta go back into the Harry math and algebra. But what we just kind of showed here is that is that this, this rule can pretty much be generally applied for things, for elastic collisions that have equal mass, uh, which is kind of cool. All right, so hope that helped. See you later, bye.